Galen Zartman and Sarah Haas that are here with Rescue Methods. Uh, this is a quick segment. We want to go over pickoffs that are fire department based. Uh, the reason I stress the point that it's fire department based is in a lot of applications when we're doing pickoffs, especially that involve ascending or moving up the rope, um, we're really starting to stress and see a lot of content out there that involves very specialized equipment. There are a lot better ways to ascend rope than what we're going to go over today. Um, you can use climbing kits with foot ascenders and knee ascenders and chest ascenders, but all of those applications are basically unidirectional. So you're, you're traveling up and that's it. Once you make access to the victim, you gotta have some more advanced skill sets to be able to integrate a descent control device, transfer your load, uh, and, it, and it gets kind of elaborate. It's also a lot of gear that 90% of your fire departments around the country don't have. So today is all about taking devices or hubs that most departments do have and integrating them into ascending or descending systems and then doing really hasty, easy things to transfer the victim's load, convert them into a pickoff, get them off their lines and bring them down to the deck. So for what we're going through today, these hubs can be any of the newer multifunction devices, okay? Uh, D-Force, Petzl IDs, clutches, um, any of those applications that allow you to both um, have a one directional pulley or pass rope around it as well as to have a descent control device. Um, even to the point of using system hubs, such as uh, MPDs or Maestros, both of those devices can work in this application. They're not really designed for this application, but not from a, a safety or a load-based perspective, more from ergonomics. So the reason we're hitting these and focusing on these is most of your fire department rope teams are only equipped with a small handful of these style of devices that we just discussed. So it's really important that we talk about how do we integrate them into these sequences so that we can effectively pull off our rescue application. So we'll do a quick ground school walkthrough on how this would look, and then Sarah and I are gonna actively do it. We're both rigged into our devices. The theory here would be Sarah would be my victim. She would be suspended somewhere mid-height on rope, and I would either be descending down to her or ascending up to her. If I'm descending down to her, then I'm lowering myself on this device. I'm gonna stop above her slightly, and you can see that I've already got a connector rigged in, okay? This is just a static connector. A lot of fire departments are still also using pickoff straps, um, but any rated cordage, uh, section of webbing, anything that's, that's gonna meet the load requirements for safety to connect from yourself to the victim is gonna be appropriate. However, where you rig it in is really key. You wanna make sure that you rig these in so that they are an extension of your main line. You don't wanna take these connectors and rig them in directly to your harness because then the victim's load is gonna be directly on your person instead of assumed by the device you're using and the connectors that you're using. So when I would get to Sarah, I would simply take my connector and I would take this connection and make it connect to her harness. Once I'm tied into her harness here, we're on a little bit of a stagger here, um, I'm gonna reach down and access her device and I'm just gonna engage it and lower on her device. Once she lowers, it's gonna bring this into position and it's gonna load it. Uh, if, if this is too long, I need to be mobile on rope because I may need to invert or move a little bit sideways to be able to track that device until the load is completely transferred to my system. Once it's transferred to my system, then I can simply disconnect her device and bring her on down to ground. Now, conversely, if I'm not descending down to Sarah, but I'm ascending up above Sarah. As rescuers, it's really important that you have the versatility to both uh, pick the load up or bring the load down. In the application we just did, I'm securing the load and I'm bringing the load down. But if I'm wanting to convert into uh, lifting, there's a lot of tricks I can use. We're gonna try and focus on uh, what would also be a climbing system that you're gonna use on this. So I'm gonna take my cordage and I'm gonna run my cordage up to a handled ascender connection up here. That's gonna give me a handhold to be able to help lift myself up. I'm gonna put a pulley on it and I'm gonna redirect my line coming out of my, my clutch through that pulley. When I haul, I'm gonna ascend. When I get to Sarah, if I rig in this same connector, I can generate enough quick force with a couple of little tricks that I'm gonna show you on rope to be able to get her load up and captured and then reach down and just disconnect her gear and then we're off to the races. So that's kind of the ground school overview on what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do both applications and I'll let you guys see it. Okay, so 
it's important to talk about this ascending capability or this hoisting capability as rescuers, not just from the pickoff perspective, but also in case it is more effective to pull off a rescue sequence in the ascent. Too many fire departments are completely neglecting and avoiding this skill set. They're getting away from personal rescuer uh, capabilities and doing everything to system-based concepts where it's, it's fixed break and you're being lowered or hauled. Um, the problem is when you get to the victim, if you don't have these skill sets in your arsenal, um, you're, you're kind of clipped, your wings are clipped. There's, there's not gonna be a lot that you're gonna be able to do without a lot of excessive rigging and, and evolutions. Same thing with just gaining access to her. Uh, it may be far more efficient for me to come to existing lines, send a singular rescuer up to evaluate the lines, and then me ascend those lines to her than it would be to, to deploy an entire team up to the top side with all of our resources and do a whole bunch of additional rigging to do a fixed system. So, coming out of all of these style of devices, to convert into a climbing capability or just a quick lifting capability for a pickoff is all I need is a rope grab that's gonna come somewhere on my tensioned line. I'm using a handle to center today uh, because these handles are, give you nice grab points to give you additional oomph when you're doing these moves. But this could be as simple as a Prusa grab. So whatever is at your resources as a fire department for a rope grab, that's what you can, can utilize in this position, okay? And then coming out of that, um, I've got a, an integrated pulley in my carabiner here, but this could just be another carabiner, or it could be a carabiner with a pulley. You see how I've developed this now, I can advance this, and when I pull down on this, this is obviously going to lift the load, okay? Um, there's a whole nother discussion about what this exactly is. This is a three to one because I am generating force on the pull. In just the actual unit's attention counts, uh, this is a two to one, but when the load itself adds an element to it, it's gonna become a, a three to one mechanical advantage to help, uh, to help with the efficiency of this, okay? Um, again, notice that I've already got a connector rigged in here that's going to the appropriate place. I wanna make sure that I'm major access to major access to be able to leapfrog into my victim and I'm ready to go. Again, this could also be a pickoff strap, cordage, um, any appropriate load rated application to give you connection to the victim. All right, let's go do it. Okay, so the mechanics on this climb. Um, there's a lot of, of variations to be able to do this and do it efficiently. One is I'm just gonna simply use a lot of bicep strength basically uh, and lat strength to just hand jack myself. So I can advance my hand on the sender, I can grab hold of my rope coming out of that, that change of direction pulley and I can just hand jack. That's gonna bring my load up. Now, if I'm doing that and I feel inefficient or I'm not moving properly, I can do a two-hand technique. In a two-hand technique, I'm gonna put one hand in the handle of cinder, I'm gonna put the other hand on the rope, and I'm gonna kind of pull, pull both at the same time. That's gonna look like this. That gives you a little more efficiency. Now, if you wanna use bigger muscle groups, you can basically create a foot loop I'm not rigging into my foot ascender or doing anything fancy here. I'm just creating a bite and coming around the base of my boot. When I come around the base of my boot, I can bring this rope back up. I'm gonna hold this rope tight to this rope tight. I'm gonna grab my handle to center, get a nice big set, and I'm gonna step up with my big leg muscles. That's gonna be a lot easier mechanically than using all arm strength. When I reset, I'm just pulling slack up around that bike, grabbing a new bike, and stepping up again. So those are kind of your three variations. Uh, you'll notice in these applications, uh, belays are imperative. We're using ASAPs that are traveling on static lines for our belays. Uh, if you don't have ASAPs, then obviously you're working off of another belay application. Somebody is running a belay topside, something along those lines. So when I'm ready to make my pickoff, I'm going to get a hold of my victim, and I'm going to bring my victim towards me. When my victim comes close to me, if she does not have an appropriate belay, the first connection I want to make is an extension of my belay or a secondary belay device. If her belay is adequate and already rigged, then she's good right there. Coming out of my clutch, I'm going to take my connector, and I'm going to tie my connector into her body position. So I'm going to bring up her connector here. I'm going to rig in there. 
do my safety checks on those connectors, and I can now verify she has one point of contact here, two points of contact here. To just transfer her at this point out, as all I'm going to do is lower her on her device. She comes down into this position. She's loaded on my implement now. And now I can disconnect her, her device and we're set to, to descend down and she's rescued. Now, conversely, let's say that she is rigged here, uh, but this she's not on a device. So she's on the end of a rope, something on those lines that is fixed. And I don't have the ability to deploy her down. This is that scenario where I'm going to work up above her, I'm gonna tie in my connector strap, and now I've got to basically lift her up so that I can get her load off of her device. In a lot of these applications, it's being taught to rig in things like Aztecs or four to ones, different mechanical advantages which require other special devices that a lot of fire departments aren't carrying. If you do basically counterweighting, you get a hold of the victim, you give a manual upward momentous pull while you're applying down force on something, you can typically transfer their load. So if I use this assembly to my advantage, I can bring this rig up, I can come down and create another foot loop, just like I did before. So it might be hard for you guys to see over there, but I'm gonna bring this hand up Go ahead and bring your arm down. I'm going to bring this foot up. I'm going to create a bite. It's going to go around that boot. I'm going to bring this boot together. I've got her load. I've come down and secured this in as tight as I can. By grabbing in here and having a device that's going to auto capture, in many cases, I can grab my cinder and with my step up, I can start transferring her load onto my system. And you can all see now, I've built slack into her device, okay? That's one mechanism. If I'm working on that, sometimes based on body weight, I may be loading this thing and trying to attempt this. And when I get up to this position, I'm not actually moving her. If I trade hands real quick, grab a hold of her contact point down here by her waist, use my leg to my advantage, and lift on her while I step, I'm gonna get a much more momentous movement. So now I'm gonna load her, and in one counterweight move, that's a much better application. Now she's completely on my system, all of her stuff is loose, and I'm able to simply reach down here and disconnect her device. So that's kind of the the 101 on all those load transfer applications. We'll go ahead and DC her right now, and then I'll bring her down to the deck. Remember once you engage your movement and you're ready to come back down. If you're normally traveling at X rate of speed, when you pick up this second basically load capacity, your movement is gonna be much higher. So you gotta add more friction control to whatever your device is to make sure that you're moving safely. So I'm gonna reach up now. I'm gonna disconnect my rope grab, whether that's that prusik, that handle cinder, whatever that is. Now I'm now in a good position to lower. So I'm gonna ease into my friction control, make sure I have absolute control over the load, and I'm gonna start coming down nice and easy.
stuff on the deck. On the deck, good. And that's it. Fire department base pickoffs. Uh, hope that's stuff that you guys can apply and uh, hope it's stuff that works for you guys at the department. Uh, stay safe, train hard.